Luna, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman. The Biden administration has launched a war on energy, which really means a war on the resources that Americans need to live productive, meaningful lives. We need to do, produce more domestic oil, natural gas, and nuclear energy. These natural resources are the bounty of our nation and should be responsibly extracted for the benefit of the American people. Increased production keeps energy costs low, supports good paying jobs, and advances American energy independence from foreign nations and strengthens our national security. Unfortunately, since day one, President Biden has chosen to punish Americans, first by revoking the permit for the Keystone Pipeline, which could have supplied the U.S. with over 830,000 barrels of oil per day. According to the Bureau of Land Management, there are currently 4,609 permits for drilling on federal lands that await this administration's approval. Many of these can be approved today, allowing companies to move forward with oil development. In addition, there are 8,295 outstanding approved permits that are unable to be developed due to the administration's regulatory framework that has constrained oil and gas production, which is very telling based on his speech last night. Maximizing energy production in America will limit the need to import from other nations, reduce high energy costs, create jobs domestically, and in my opinion, protect the environment. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to insert these graphics into the record. Without objection, so ordered. Ms. Sagama, are the Biden administration's policies having the effect of increasing energy abundance or constraining our nation's energy portfolio? I would say it's constraining. Mr. Sandberg, which kind of countries develop and innovate more clean power solutions, prosperous ones or poor ones? I think the innovation is led mostly by the developed world. Thank you. It's clear that the Biden administration and radical left want to impoverish Americans with pushing energy costs, but let's talk about who they're rewarding. Behind me, you guys can see a chart, and it has China leading the world in the highest CO2 emissions. In fact, China's 2021 emissions were about equal to the emissions of the U.S., EU, and India combined. In 2021, China consumed about 44,000 terawatt hours of energy with 0.26 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt per hour, while the U.S. consumed 26,000 terawatt hours of energy with 0.19 kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Ms. Johnson, your testimony calls for considering cumulative impacts of greenhouse gas emissions. Are you aware that China emissions would be more than double the U.S., and does Chinese CO2 molecules not count towards a cumulative impact on our planet? That's not a question I feel capable of answering. I'm asking you that, though, because with your opinion, which I do respect, we're talking about how we can best, I think, preserve our community and the environment. And when we send our production and our oil overseas, when we're enabling countries with foreign policy that are destroying the planet, I think that it's very applicable to this committee. So please answer the question. It's not a question that I feel capable of answering. According to the chart behind me, since you don't want to comply, China's destroying our environment. Our current foreign policy is enabling China. And it's clear that with this administration, that for those who are advocating for climate justice, that are those who are advocating for climate change are failing to acknowledge that they are empowering through foreign policy and through an administration that is limiting our ability here in the United States to produce clean energy. They are empowering a country that is going to destroy us all. Thank you, Chairman. I yield my time.